This is the location of the former Levitzorstrasse synagogue in Berlin. The synagogue is no longer there. It was damaged in bombing raids during the war and the remains were pulled down in 1955. The monument we see here today was inaugurated on the 14th of November 1988. A children's playground now stands on the site where the synagogue once was. The Levitz of Strasse synagogue was inaugurated on the 7th of April 1914 and it was built in the style of a building from the 18th century. Adjacent to the synagogue was a community centre with a religious school and some community apartments. The building complex was not finally completed until 1919 because of the war. With a residential building and a school building, the synagogue, with 2,120 seats, was one of the largest places of worship in the city. Services were still held here until October 1941. The rabbi was Julius Lekovitz. He was born in 1876. In 1943 he was deported and murdered in Auschwitz. He is remembered today by the stumbling block at his former home at Jagostrasse 38. During the night of the broken glass pogrom in November 1938, the synagogue on Levatzostrasse was slightly damaged, but it could still be used for services and community work. I think the reason for it not being damaged as extensively as some other synagogues was because it blended in more with the buildings around it. The Orienbergerstrasse synagogue possibly was more of a target because of its Moorish architecture, while Josef Goebbels, who was then in Munich for the anniversary of the attempted 1923 putsch, personally gave the instructions for the destruction of the Fasenstrasse synagogue, and we know this from his own diary. Der Kampf um Leningrad. Leningrad, die Geburtsstätte des Bolschewismus, ist völlig eingeschlossen und liegt im vernichtenden Feuer der deutschen Batterien. Hier wurden die auf Leningrad zurückflutenden Feindkolonnen von unseren Kampfflugzeugen und unserer Artillerie gepackt. In the flushes of victory on the Eastern Front, the National Socialist leadership in the autumn of 1941 ordered that Jews be expelled, first of all, from three cities, Berlin, Vienna and Prague. Goebbels once more appears to have been the driving force behind this decision. On the 17th of September 1941, Adolf Hitler approved the plans. In a letter of the 18th of September 1941, SS Chief Heinrich Himmler informed Arthur Greisler, this Gauleiter of the Wartegau, it is the Führer's desire that the Third Reich and the Protectorate be cleansed of Jews as soon as possible, from west to east. I will try, therefore, to begin deporting the Jews this year, if possible, first to those territories in the east that became part of the Third Reich two years ago. The Wartegau was formerly in Poland. It is a land around the area of Poznan. Copies of this letter were sent to SS Gruppenführer Reinhard Heydrich, head of the Reich Security Main Office, and to William Copper, higher SS commander and police leader in the Wartegau area. The 1st of October 1941 was Yom Kippur, the most important of the Jewish High Holy Days. Dr. Leo Beck, Philip Kotzoa, and Marta Mosser, members of the board of the Reich Association of Jews were informed by the Berlin Gestapo that the deportations were about to begin and instructed them to convert the Levitzostrasse synagogue into a collection camp for around 1,000 people at any one time. For this purpose, the seating in the main room was removed and the floor was strewn with straw so it could serve as a bed for the night. The Gestapo disguised the first transports as an apartment clearance operation. 
This was, of course, in instructions given by Albert Speer, who had earlier ordered that Jews be ordered out of the apartments in order to make room for non-Jews who had lost their apartments to make space available for his building projects. There was also the need to provide extra housing as some dwellings had been damaged in British air raids. Accordingly, the Gestapo had initially described the synagogue on Levitzelstrasse opposite the Jewish Community Centre as an emergency shelter and not as a collection camp. The synagogue was probably chosen because it was only slightly damaged in the pogrom and was large enough to accommodate all the people likely to be sent on one transport out of Berlin. On the 4th of October 1941, SS Obergruppenführer Kurt der Lüge, Chief of the Uniformed Police, gave the order to deport 20,000 Jews from the Reich and the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia to the Polish city of Łódź. The Department for Jewish Affairs at the Berlin Gestapo, headed by SS Untersturmführer Gerhard Stubbs and his deputy, Criminal Oberst Inspector Franz Pufer were put in charge of organising the transports together with the Department of Jewish Affairs in the Reich Security Main Office. In order to enable the deportations to proceed smoothly, the employees of the Jewish Community Centre were forced to compile the transport list and send out instructions telling people to report to the assembly camp. Attached to each deportation order was a detailed questionnaire regarding property still owned by the victim. Each deportee was allowed to take personal luggage weighing no more than 50 kilos and cash to the amount of 100 Reichmarks. In many cases, Jews were brought to the assembly point by Gestapo personnel or by other Jews who were forced to assist in the deportation process. The victims were given a few minutes to get ready and leave their homes forever. If the victims had not prepared their luggage beforehand, they only had a few moments to grab what they could. A truck collected the Jews on the street and after completing the roundup from other apartments took them to the Levitzelstrasse synagogue. At the synagogue their luggage was meticulously checked, sometimes with the use of violence. Possessions brought with the victims could be stolen. This must have been a dreadfully humiliating experience for these people. Suicides were common. The Jewish community was solely responsible for caring for the people scheduled for deportation. That is to say it had to look after their needs, such as providing them with food whilst they were there. From the first transport to the east on the 18th of October 1941 to the 22nd transport on the 26th of October 1942, the, the transports of Berlin Jews were compiled here. The length of the stay in the synagogue depended on the availability of transport. It could be one night, a few nights or much longer. On the day of deportation, the victims would either have to walk to the station under guard or be provided transport, or sometimes a mixture of both. Fit people could walk, elderly or infirm people would be transported by tram, bus, lorry or car. Grunewald station is some distance away and after the first transportation being witnessed by many people, further deportations were done at night. The Moabit station freight yard is much closer. The Anhalter Bahnhof was also used for deportations. Occasionally, there were long periods of time between individual transports so people could be summoned to the Levitz of Strasse synagogue, but then there was no transport further on. In this case, people could have a longer stay at Levitz of Strasse. There was no permanent Gestapo camp director, as was later the case on Gross Hamburger Strasse, nor was there a permanent Jewish organisation to look after the prisoners. Nevertheless, employees of the Jewish community had to act as stewards and look after the victims, feeding them when they were here and help them with such things as carrying their luggage. The collection camp at Levitzov Strasse Synagogue was used until the autumn of 1942 and was then replaced by the collection camp in the evacuated retirement home of the Jewish community at Grosser Hamburger Strasse 26. As part of the factory campaign at the end of February 1943, where Jewish people were rounded up who were working in factories, mainly in war industries, the synagogue was used again as a collection camp. Then it was known as Camp 2. From the 2nd of March 1943 to the 12th of March 1943, one of several locations where Jews were held. One of the results of the factory campaign was the Rosenstrasse protest, which led to the release of some of the prisoners, and even one group was returned from auschwitz monowitz However, there was no protest at Levitzelstrasse and everyone here was deported.
Around 20,000 people spent their last nights in Berlin lying on the straw on the floor of the former Levitzerstrasse synagogue, no doubt terrified at what lay ahead of them. They had good reason to be terrified. You can see in other videos the places from which people were deported. I also have video from the Wuj Ghetto, a destination which many were taken to. Very few people who were deported from Levitzerstrasse synagogue survived. I hope you found that interesting. The Holocaust is my specialist area and uh, there are more videos on the Holocaust on this channel. I upload every Friday at 20 hundred hours and sometimes upload uh, at other days as well. So if you want to know when I'm uploading, the best way is to subscribe. But for the moment, thanks for listening.